Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about the activated clotting time, or the activated coagulation time, or ACT. We use it mainly to monitor the intrinsic coagulation pathway, especially in patients who are taking heparin. With that said, now let's get started. This is part of a series, go to my channel, click on playlist, and this place is called Labs. Also, I have another playlist called Bleeding and Coagulation Disorders, where we have talked about lots of things, including PT, PTT, DRVVT, and even TT. So what is hemostasis to stop bleeding? We have primary hemostasis and secondary hemostasis. Today's topic is about secondary hemostasis, also known as coagulation, also known as the clotting cascade. How do we measure primary hemostasis, platelet count, bleeding time? How about secondary hemostasis? Mainly we have PT and PTT. We have others including TT or thrombin time. And today's topic, ACT, activated coagulation time. Primary hemostasis happens first. This is the formation of the platelet plug and these are the tests. Secondary hemostasis happen later. These are the coagulation factors. They end up in a fibrin thrombus which traps the red blood cells. To test the secondary hemostasis, we have PT, PTT, ACT, and TT. So let's just add ACT to our list here. Friedrich Nietzsche said, he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. He who has a why to the ACT can bear almost any explanation. Okay, so ACT. Why? Why do we do these coagulation tests? Patients with unexplained bleeding, patient getting ready for a surgery, or patient taking anticoagulants, in this case, heparin. Here is secondary hemostasis, also known as the coagulation cascade. We have an intrinsic pathway and an extrinsic pathway. We have talked about them before. It's easier to start here. What's the goal? Fibrin fibers. Okay, where does fibrin come from? Fibrinogen. Cool. For fibrinogen to become fibrin, we need thrombin. So, thrombin, where do you come from? From prothrombin. Okay, who's going to activate prothrombin into thrombin? A committee of four members. Two numbers and two words. Five and ten, calcium and phospholipid. Who is going to activate ten into ten A? You have the extrinsic pathway or the intrinsic path. Extrinsic, just factor seven. Intrinsic, you have eight, nine, eleven, twelve. Worst ten, ten was here. So it's eight, nine, eleven, twelve. Let's say I have a problem in the intrinsic pathway, what's going to happen? I will have problems making fibrin and therefore I will have prolongation or a delay in the time that it takes me to coagulate, which will lead to a prolonged activated clotting time. If I have a problem in the extrinsic pathway, the same thing will happen. Let's say I'm taking heparin. Heparin activates antithrombin 3. Antithrombin 3 will inhibit factors 9, 10, 11, 12. So here is 9. Here is 10, here is 11 and 12. Also, sometimes factor 2 and factor 7. So everything is gone. That's why ACT will be prolonged and that's the purpose of the test. We have compared between the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathway before. Don't forget, heparin will interfere with both pathways. Warfarin will also interfere with both pathways. It just happened that it's easier for us to monitor warfarin using PT and it's easier for us to monitor heparin using the PTT and the ACT. Let's say I'm taking heparin. Heparin will prolong everything including PT, PTT and even ACT. Okay, medicosis, from what I understand is that PTT and ACT are very similar. Yes, indeed, they are very similar, just very few differences. Similarities, both of them will measure the intrinsic pathway, mainly they can measure the intrinsic and extrinsic, but mainly intrinsic. Both of them can be used to monitor heparin therapy. However, activated clotting time has some advantages. It's more accurate at high doses of heparin. Let's say that the patient is taking tons of heparin. In this case, ACT is way more accurate than PTT. ACT is cheaper. Oh yeah, because it's older. It also happened to be faster. However, it's less sophisticated in most cases. In most cases, PTT is better with tiny exceptions, including high doses of heparin and if the patient's at the bedside, because you can do this test at the bedside, the results are like that, fast and furious. Activated clotting time or ACT, what's the goal? To measure the intrinsic pathway and to monitor heparin therapy. Normal value, 70 to 120 seconds. Increased N and decreases N. Of course, if I'm bleeding, it's gonna increase. 
But if I'm clotting, it's going to decrease. It's called common sense. It's a balance. Too little coagulation factors, you bleed. Too much coagulation factors, you thrombose. So this activated clotting time will be prolonged in cases of heparinuse, warfarinuse, coagulation factor deficiency. Yeah, all of them, I'm bleeding. Lupus inhibitor and cirrhosis, I'm bleeding. Decrease N, I'm thrombosing. And we have talked about all of these factors in my playlist called coagulation and bleeding. You can test your knowledge by answering these 50 hematology cases. Those are difficult, by the way. And if you want to learn about antibiotics, I have a course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to get my cases and my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.